Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we've come to our fifth and final video on this topic of utilizing science formulas, at least for now anyway, final one. Um, I really, really wanted to get a formula like this in uh, because I had a student come to back to class one day after taking her science formula and they said, oh my gosh, Kate, I saw this problem on the GED science test and it had a symbol you never taught me. And they were super mad at me. And the symbol that they saw was this triangle symbol. They said, I do not know what a triangle means. Um, so we are doing this uh, for this problem here today. So if you see the triangle, you won't panic like my student did. So let's check it out. It said, scientists compute the acceleration of an object by dividing the, and look what they tell us they're dividing, the change of velocity triangle V. So triangle means change. Change of velocity. We know that things change, okay? And they say they divide the change of velocity by the change in time, triangle T. Again, I'm saying how much the time changed, how much time passed. And then it says find the acceleration in meters per second squared of a car that started out traveling five meters per second and accelerated to 15 meters per second in five seconds. A lot going on here, but I don't want you to freak out. Let's, cause we have a formula. The formula will tell us what to do as long as we know how to read it. So let's take a look down here. This formula says, if you'd like to find acceleration, and we do, that's what they told us to find, find the acceleration. Then what you should do is you should take the change in velocity, how much the speed of this car changed, and divide it by the change in time, how much time passed. Okay, uh, so let's just make a note of that. Change in velocity, what am I talking about? I'm talking about how much the speed changed. And triangle T means change in time, how much time passed. Okay, great. Now that we are equipped with a, a breakdown of this formula, let's go ahead and do the work over here. So my advice to all students all the time is before you plug into a formula, Write down your formula exactly as it stands, unchanged, nothing plugged in yet, and you will make less substitution errors. So there's my current formula. Acceleration is equal to change of velocity, how much my speed changed, um, uh, over a change in time, how much time passed, okay? So now it says that we are finding the acceleration. So A is the thing I don't know. I'm going to keep the A an A. And right now I'm doing what's known as the substitution step, where I trade out letters for known numbers. Okay, so the next thing I need is the change in velocity or the change in speed. And we have a very interesting thing. Uh, we don't have the change listed. Instead, in our problem, we see that we have a car that started out traveling five meters per second. So it started, we have a start, five meters per second. And then it sped up. It accelerated to 15 meters per second. Well, let's think about that. How much of a change is that? If it started out at 5 meters per second and went to 15 meters per second, how much did it change? I hope you realize that the easy way to find this change would be to just subtract. Take the most recent speed, subtract the starting speed, and 15 minus 5 is 10. So what should I do if I don't have the change? I should, should subtract to find the change. So I get 10. And 10 what? Well, both of those things were in meters per second, so 10 meters per second. Great. I'm going to erase this work so I can have some room here. Now the next thing I want is change in time. And that's just how much time passed. So if you look here, they tell me um, the change in time this time. They're very clear. They say that our car started out traveling five meters per second and accelerated to 15 meters per second. And they tell us exactly how long that took. They say in five seconds. So how much time passed? 
um, while that car was accelerating, five seconds. So uh, my five seconds will go down there. And now I can do the numbers in my calculator. 10 divided by five, well, gosh, you don't even need a calculator to tell you that's two. And then you might be saying, well, what about my unit? That looks super messy. Even if you're confused about units in science, they tell me here what my unit will be in. It says find the acceleration in meters per second squared. And that indeed is the unit that we generally measure acceleration in. All right, so that's my final answer. Now, good news about the GED. Even if you're confused about units, meters per second square is super confusing to you. On the GED, probably you would only need to identify the number answer, the numeric part of the answer, the two. That being said, if you were in your college uh, science classes, you would need your unit. Um, most science teachers are pretty darn picky about having your units right. So... Um, it's worth an exploration of that topic, but we'll do that at a later date. So for now, answers two, and um, that's our last one of these formulas we've gotten into about as deep as they'll get on the science test. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.